Welcome to the channel. I wanted to showcase my brand new Horus Heresy Death Guard Army. This is 3000 points, custom painted, Den of Imagination level port for painting standard. And it's so very pretty. I say 3000 points. It's 3000 points without the Typhon. Stick the Typhon in it. 3400 and about 45, depending on what stuff you put on the Typhon. So that gives me a little bit of wiggle room to either put the Typhon in it and take some other stuff out. Or leave the Typhon out, just run it as a 3,000 point list. Or, of course, allies in Horus Heresy, but it's it, it's good, it's here, It's I'm excited. Now Alex Sessio's got the World Eaters, and I've now got Death Guard, Sons of Horus, and the other ones. Empress Children, that I did myself. <laughs> Which means I've got all four factions that took part in Istvan 3. Waiting for a few more bits to come back from Den of Imagination. For the Sons of Horus, like Abaddon, they got, they've got they uh, got Loken as well, but a few more bits. And then we're going to start playing and showcasing some of the battles, some of the beats that happened during the Isvan 3 campaign. Isvan 3 took a couple of months to conclude, so I'm really looking forward to doing the Khan thing, or the Loken thing, and or the Tarvitz thing, and playing some of the key bits of that battle, or... Filling in the gaps, like what happened out here in the Wastes, what happened at the Siege of the Presenter's Palace, what happened at Crossroads Delta B7X or something like that. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing quite a few games set on this fan 3. I mean, I've played quite a few games set on this fan 3, but I mean more games with all the legions that were there and some of the key characters as well. Now, of course, the Death Guard were the 14th Legion, led by Mortarian, but previously they were known as the Dusk Raiders. And the Dusk Raiders were drawn from the warlike clans of Albia. They were known for their typically stoic temperament. And they were experts at survival, endurance. And they quickly gained a reputation for being relentless and disciplined fighters. The Legion earned their name by following the old Albion tactic of attacking at night during the changing of the watch. Or at dusk during the changing of the watch. Where the gathering dark would help, um, help shield the advance, help hide the advance. And famously, they gained such a reputation during the Unification Wars that their enemies would often fade away or, or give up as night fell, rather than face them. Then, of course, came the Great Crusade, and then, of course, came Mortarion. And they were one of the legions that were completely broken down and reshaped in their Primarch's image. I don't think any other legion was as erratically changed by their Primarch as much as the Dusk Raiders were. The Death Guard became remorseless killers. Mortarion believed that mankind should be free from oppression and that any victory owned without restraint or limit or mercy was justified. They would just roll over people. They didn't garrison. They didn't build. They just inexorably ground down their opponents. The Legion's Librarius was disbanded. The Legion also used widely hated alchem weapons and rad munitions regularly consuming planets and phosphex fire. Mortarion was an all-or-nothing kind of guy. He, he didn't hold back from destroying entire star systems, as you can read in his Primarchs novel. He would just... That, that was Mortarion things. But the Great Crusade, it set out to save worlds, not just destroy them. So the Death Guard and these weapons that they used were consigned to the dark corners and only the most nightmarish campaigns as the Great Crusade ground on. The Legion was fundamentally organised around infantry. They lacked extensive elite units, with only a few exceptions, such as they made a heavy, they made a lot of use of dreadnoughts and Terminator armour. But in general, not a lot of elites, not a lot of fast stuff, because Mortarion believed that even a single powered armoured legionary could kill an entire world given enough time and endurance. And so this 3000 point with a Typhon list that you see in front of you is built around the OG right of war called the Reaping. When added to their Legion trait, which is called Remorseless, what you have is an infantry heavy list that just walks all the time. It doesn't run. It can't make any movement phase reactions. It just walks. And that's two big negatives there. It means that the army is moving at a fixed speed all the time, not being able to run, not being able to react to your opponent in the movement phase, except, of course, to do the once per battle death guard advance reaction, which is called one minute remorseless advance. Sorry, it was written down over there. <laughs> but apart from that particular thing, they just walk forward. Uh, so lots of negatives, 
What's the pluses? Well, they always walk forward. They're never slowed down by terrain. They're never pinned either. And when they fire their guns, they count as stationary. And with the reaping, you can take heavy weapons. You can take basically Devastator's heavy support squads in the troop slot. The idea being is they're not really heavy support well they are heavy support slots in the rule sense but they're not really heavy support slots as far as Mortarion and the Death Guard are concerned they're so drilled they're so disciplined into in remorselessly marching forward step by step by step unslowed unbowed by anything then a bunch of the normal legionaries just picked up or, or issued las cannons plasma cannons multi melters if you're good at walking forward and laying down a pile of hate and just rolling over your opponents then don't bring a bolt gun. Bring a big anti-tank weapon instead. So this list, without the Typhon, has six heavy slots in it, but of course three of them are taken in the troop slot, which means it unlocks more stuff that you can do in the heavy slot. So a triple unit of Devastators heavy support, one with multi-melters, two with plasma cannons, and then in the backfield in the heavy slot we have um, uh, Leviathan Dreadnoughts, we have Scorpius missile launchers, and Grave Warden Terminators are heavy further demonstrating the point that Mortarion didn't really care about elites all very much. He just cared about the average legionary, the endurance of the common man or the uncommon man in the case of a legionary, and big guns and chemical weapons and blue fire and crawling death and just nasty, nasty stuff. I put breaches in the troop slot, so three units of ten, which isn't necessarily the best choice. <laughs> For the Death Guard, that's OG Mark III armor, by the way, before the new upgrade kit came out. But I put breaches in that. The best thing that you probably want to do in the troop slot for the Death Guard is have massed ranks of just tactical marines. Because with Fury of the Legion walking forward, they're firing their bolt guns twice at 24 inches all the time, regardless of whether they walk forward or stay still, because Fury of the Legion gets you extra shots if you stay still, but they always count as stationary. And within 12 inch range, they're firing out those bolt guns three times all the time when they're moving. So probably best in the troop slot to have massed tactical marines just laying down hate. But I put breaches in there because it looks cool. Mark III, Breaches, just sings Death Guard to me. Having said that, when I add to this army in the future, because I want to get all my forces up to about 5,000 points so I can show different looks of Death Guard here or there, but when I add to them, I will be adding at least two full squads of 20-man Mark III dudes. Tactical dudes, tactical squads. It also needs a command squad in there with a banner because Legion standards in command squads are really good. They score, they help keep your Praetors alive. To help mix it up a little bit, the list could do with a couple of different dreadnoughts other than the Leviathan, just because the Maltarian liked his dreadnoughts. And a whole, I mean, if I want to get dirty, I could add 10 Las Cannon guys in the troop slot. But you can do that to, you do that to any Horus Heresy list, but it would fit perfectly in the Death Guard. The Death Guard are one of the only legions that can take rad bombs as well and rag grenades in the first round of combat the enemy counts as minus one toughness regardless of whether they charge or charge they can have alchem flamers so juicier flamers that are either poison three up or flesh bane the bigger ones rad grades are an upgrade that you can buy for any infantry squad the alchem flamers and heavy alchem flamers and all those weapons of those types you can just switch in for free or whether there, wherever there is a flame or a heavy flame or equivalent in your army. You can do similar things with a lot of legions. A lot of legions can either switch in stuff for free or you can pay for upgrades for free because that's the flavor of the legion. That's the kind of gear that they had. But the idea behind the collection inspired the idea behind the list. And the idea is no reserves. And well, there might be a rhino off the table with 10 dudes in it because... Having a rhino off the table with 10 dudes in it to score an objective or to do something later in the game is a pretty good tactic in any in any Horus Heresy list. And the idea that uh, the army, all of the army is deployed, marching forward, laying down the pain, rolling over the opponent and that there was a rhino out there with a breacher squad just making sure that the rear is clear and they're only hurrying up. That's fine. That sits in my narrative brain. That's fine. But the rest of the army is deployed. You are not allowed to subterranean assault or to deep strike or to outflank with the reaping and remorseless. Everything else just starts on the table 
and rolls over your opponent. The Grave Wardens leading the charge with two Leviathan Dreadnoughts with all the Melters. They have to take the Melters because there's not a lot of anti-tank in the list other than the big squad of 10 Multi-Melters. And honestly, if someone was walking towards me with 10 Multi-Melters and they can move and shoot and Multi-Melters are all twin linked in Horus Heresy, they're target number one. So a steady advance, not a slow advance because our speed is steady. We're not slowed. We're not pinned. We walk forward and it's this rolling death kind of look that I wanted to get in my death guard list. Then, of course, lastly, the final thing I'd like to add is Mortarian. So this is the 3000 point with the Typhon list for now. Going to be looking to add about 1500 to 2000 points of this over the next year. I love the look of this list. I absolutely love the paintwork. I mean, I own Death Guard in 40k and they're all rotten and smelly and covered in pus. But these Death Guards, there's a bit of corrosion here and there, but not very much. They still kind of looked after their kit. This is Death Guard before the fall. This is Death Guard as they were meant to be. This is Death Guard on Istvan 3. That rhymes. Battle Captain Nathaniel Garrow's Legion. What's not to love? And thank you so much, Dan. It looks absolutely stunning. I just, this is one of the, the best ones you've done so far. Probably the best one that you've done so far as a Legion. It just, it's sweet. Links below to the Den stuff. Just wanted to showcase this in a video because it's not every day that you take possession of a whole new army. And I wanted to shout it out to all the Death Guard Horus Heresy players out there. And finally ask the Death Guard Horus Heresy players out there. What right of wars do you run? Or do you not run a right of war? Do you find another way to make their to make their rules sing? Or because of the narrative, is there a different way that you lean into list buildings? What do your lists look like? Or if you're building a Death Guard list, what ideas do you have for a Death Guard list? I, I, looking forward to reading all the comments and the feedback below. I'm looking, I'm fishing for inspiration here, guys. Anyway, I just find it amazing that you can get so many different looks and so many different lists, so many different feels to an army which can play completely different from the same book. It just uh, speaks to the strength of the Horus Heresy rule set. You have two armies that look exactly the same but function completely differently just based on a few tweaked rules here, there. It's, it's glorious stuff. Anyway, shout out to Den of Imagination. One more time, shout out to all of you guys. I do hope you enjoyed this video and happy wargaming.